34 and verse 35. If you have it, say I have it. Amen. Psalms 34, verse 4 and 5. Amen. Read it with me together in unison, everybody. Amen. Clap your hands and be seated. Man, everyone shout the desires of your heart. Tell three people that the desires of your heart. Man, you know, our hearts are always full of desires. Every single day, every second of the day, every minute of the day, every hour of the day. Our hearts is full of desires. Whether it's desires for food, friends, or God, or whatever. At every waking moment, we're always desiring something. Tell somebody we're always desiring something. Always. So which is why the promise of Psalms 37 and 4 should capture our attention when David says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Now, if that don't capture your attention, then I don't think nothing else will. Again, David said, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you what? Of what? That's a powerful promise, but what does it mean? It's so powerful, but yet we have to understand what does it really mean. Some think it means that if I delight in God, then he will give me whatever else I desire. Whether it be a job or health or even a new car or a husband or a wife or a lot of money in the bank, if I just delight in God, He's going to give all that to me. But there are a couple of reasons I don't think that's what this promise means. Because if it was that easy and that simple, we all would just delight ourselves in God. We'll have all the money that we need. We'll have the cards. We'll have what we call that perfect spouse or the perfect children. If all we had to do was just delight, somebody please help me and say it. That's all we have to do. So I don't think that's what the verse is promising. One reason is because of what happens when we delight in the Lord. Think of a time when you delighted in something. When you actually delighted in something. Maybe a sunset or maybe fishing or riding your horse or driving your car, watching your favorite TV show. It's just when you delighted in something, you know, uh, while you delighted in the sunset, you, you was not designed food clothes or money think about that whenever you desire deep into something you never desire other things because you only have delighted yourself in that which you desire if you desire just beautiful just a few days ago the weather was so beautiful and so perfect and it wasn't hot it wasn't cold had a nice little breeze blowing and I went sit out on a patio and just cut off the patio light because just as the sun set and it was darkening I just delighted to be in the midst of the sun setting and in God's presence I didn't delight nothing to drink I didn't delight to talk to no one my delight was not in food it wasn't in anything it was just in the presence of the Lord and that's where I was and that's all I wanted so you have to think about those things as you delight in the sunset what you desired was a sunset if you desired a television show that's what you desired you wanted to keep enjoying the beauty of whatever you desired and that's all I wanted to do was just keep enjoying the beauty of the sunset have you all ever experienced that when you just desire something and that's all you want nothing outside of that this is all I wanted so later Later on, you might have other desires. That's true. But at the moment uh, that you delight in the sunset, which was me, uh, what you desire is the enjoyment of the sunset. That's all I wanted. Whatever your sunset may have been, 
That's what you desire. That's all you wanted. In the same way, when we delight in the Lord, what we desire is the Lord. To keep beholding his glory, worshiping his majesty and seeing his beauty. That's all we want. So when we delight in the Lord, the desires that we have in our hearts are desires for the Lord. So what Psalms 37 and 5 says, commit thy way. So not only do you have the delight, but... David says, you have to also commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. Now notice, it wasn't poor. It's just say delight, you know, commit thy way. Not ways, but thy way. Just at that moment, thy way. Commit thy way unto the Lord. And then you have to trust also in him. The Bible always talks about trust because that's the biggest problem in the body of Christ now is the lack of trust in who God is. And he shall bring it to pass. So whatever you delight, and I'm going to tell you what this means in a minute. When you delight yourself in the Lord, again, if you go back up to verse 4 with me, he says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Now, he says he'll give you the desires of thy heart, but then you have to understand Psalms 37 and 5 says that you have to commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So whatever that desire is, God will bring it to pass. Amen? So it means, the meaning of that is that if we delight in the Lord, he will satisfy our desires for him by giving us more joy in him because this is what David was talking about in Psalms 37 4 and 5 he wasn't talking about delighting yourself in the Lord in order to get a house a car more money and all of that it was simply to desire yourself delight yourself in the Lord to get a more close intimate relationship with him and if you trust him, he'd say he'll bring it to pass. Because I can guarantee you that this morning is that there is nothing, absolutely nothing. It can be a house. It can be a car. It could be your wife, your children, your relationship, your money in the bank. Nothing can compare with being in a relationship with God. I can tell you that. Even when your family turn their backs on you, God will always be there. When friends forsake you, God will always be there. When people talk about you, God will always lift you up. Tell somebody, it's good to delight yourself in the Lord. If you have nothing else to smile about, if the devil have taken all of your joy, then if you delight yourself in the Lord and commit your ways to him, I'm telling you without a doubt anywhere in my spirit that God will bring it to pass. God will bring joy to your life. God will bring smiles. God, You know what I love about God? Even when we, uh, 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 Brother Dare, do wrong and we can still delight ourselves in God and when others won't forgive us and talk about us, God will forgive us and embrace us and love on us. So that's why David say, just, you know, I, I used to hear the old saints say these words in their songs they say just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right you know and then they would sing the songs that says walk with me Lord like you walk with my mother and walk. if you want to know how Medill them made it it's right here in the scripture I'll tell you again you know and I'm already preaching they delighted themselves in the Lord when everything else fell, I remember my grandmother just delighted herself in the Lord. And she would always say, baby, if you don't have but a piece of bread and a glass of water, thank the Lord. She was delighting herself in the Lord. When I would hear her pray, she would just delight herself in the Lord. And what I'm so thankful for is that while she was delighting herself in the Lord and, giving, and God was giving her the desires of her heart, is that I am a product of her desires. And the reason why I know that is because I used to hear when she would call out my name and she would call all of her children and her grandchildren name by name. She, my grandmother had such a relationship with God, she could have asked God for a new house and I believe God would have gave it to her. She probably could have asked God for a million dollars and I believe God would have gave it to her. That's just how her tight her relationship was with God. But instead of all of that, she just asked God, keep my grandchildren bless my grandchildren watch over them and God gave her the desires of her heart because listen if you don't know God by now I ask you to get to know him so here's the question does God gives 
Everything. Does God give believers everything we desire? Another reason is because in the Bible, God does not give believers everything. Can you imagine what would happen if God give us everything? And I'll show you, it's not just us. But take Job for an example in Job 1 and 8. Job was the most righteous man in the world. And, and, and if you look at Job 1 and 8, and the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil? But yet, Job is an example as being a righteous man, which means he delighted in the Lord and surely desired that God would immediately heal the boils on his body. But God God did not give Job this desire of his heart. And he was a righteous man. But yet God did not give him all his desire was is just to the balls to be healed. But God didn't do it. Think also of David in first Chronicles 17 verses one through four. David delighted in the Lord and David desired to build a temple to the Lord. But God did not give David this desire of his heart. He didn't give it to him. Or take Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 9 through 10. Is that Paul also delighted in the Lord. And Paul desired that God would remove the thorn from his flesh. But God did not give Paul this desire of his heart. So the Bible does not show God fulfilling all the desires of everyone who delights in him. You know. Doesn't make a difference how much or how deep we desire. God does not give us every desire of our heart. But you ought to lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord, for those desires that you have given me. And God is so wise. And I thank God that he didn't give me every desire of my heart. Because, see, some of us kept on and kept on and kept on and asking God and asking God and asking God and we wouldn't let it go and God gave us some of us some of the desires that we were desiring and then it only caused us to be frustrated and and hurt and crying and saying God bring me through this God God deliver me from this God help me with this somebody ought to shout oh we thank you God for not giving me every desire have you ever looked back at some of them relationships that you wanted, you desired, and like, ooh, I got to have her. Oh, I have to have him. And then years later, you see them and you say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Somebody ought to shout glory. glory. I have to do this part. I, I, the Bible says you just, I had to exalt myself right there. You know, I had to exalt myself. That's what the scripture says, you know. You, I had to exalt myself on that one. So you have to thank God that he don't give you every desire. And, and, and you know, in, in, a, in a rage of anger, when you're angry, you know, uh, and I, I don't want to, I'm not going to pick on none of the young folks, but you know how it is sometimes you be so mad. Well, let me not say the young folks, some of us, you know, middle-aged folks, uh, like it was back in the day, when you were so mad because mama, daddy, you know, bust your little bubble, and you would think you, 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 or somebody made you really mad in your first desire. I wish they did, did, did die. You know, I wish they just fall over and die. You ought to say, thank you, God, that that didn't happen. Because some of you wish some folks that was in your life would have died and ended up. That's all you had that helped to bring you over. So God don't give us every desire. But the Bible does show that if we desire in the Lord, that he will fully satisfy us in himself. In Psalm 73, verse 25 and 26, he says, Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart fell it, but God is the strength of my heart and a portion forever. So you see, you have to understand that, that the Bible does fulfill that God will satisfy us in him. And this is why we hear the old saints sing the song that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can you tell somebody that? Tell somebody next to you, can't nobody do me like Jesus. I don't care how good he is, I guarantee you, he ain't better than Jesus. I don't care how great she is, I guarantee you she's not greater than Jesus. Yeah. 
I don't care how blessed, listen, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Because you know what? Sometimes husbands get mad at wives and wives get mad at husbands. And daddy and mama get mad at children. Children get mad at daddy and mama. But you know what? We have to admit one thing. We ain't never got mad at Jesus. <laughs> And you know what? You, you can sit around and you can, you can think and try to figure out some things. Let me see what I can figure out that I can be mad with Jesus for. Let's see. I can't be mad at him for saving me. He did save me. Let's see. He died for me, so I can't get mad at him for that. He, he rose for me. I can't get mad. He healed me. He delivered me. Let me, see, let me think of some things that I can get mad at him for. Can I get mad at him from loving me? Absolutely not. So, see, there's no room that we can get mad at Jesus for what he has done for us. That's why David said to Israel, he says, listen, I don't know about you all, but let me tell you about me. David said, if it had not been... This is why he was delighting himself in the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Oh, let me help y'all out here. Let, let, my, my David made, didn't do what we did. So let me just come down our street. If it had not been for the Lord on our side when we wasn't on his side, but somebody that we knew that loved us, delighted themselves in him for us. So while we were out there drinking and drugging and acting a fool and acting crazy and thinking we bad when we could have had our skull split or in the grave, it was nobody but Jesus that brought us through look at somebody say even when you thought you was the baddest on this earth it was somebody so so you see it, 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 it's all about Jesus it, it's it's all about Jesus at the end of the day it see what keeps my joy is that I don't think about what I'm going through or what has happened or what someone said. I delight myself so deep in God. And I thought about that thing this morning. I say, God, you know, I feel that I'm lacking something, you know. And you know what? I, I, I didn't have to get a revelation on that. I say, Lord, I'm lacking that closeness that I used to have with you a long time ago. You want to know what the Spirit of God said? It's still there, but what you have to learn to do is do like Amos and them. Just walk with me. Oh, but, but wait a minute, not just walking with him, I feel that anointing. Not just walking with him, but see, some of y'all kneel down and pray. And some of y'all lay down and pray. But I dare you in your spare time, when you just walk, just walk out the door and just walk down the street and talk with God. And I guarantee you, by time you make it back, the, if the situation has not changed, your mindset. Oh, I wish I had somebody. See, if your desire is peace, guess what? God said in his word, Jesus said that you only have peace in him. So if you want peace, you have to delight yourself in him. Trust in him. Commit thy ways unto him. And he'll give you desire because by the time you take that little walk with him, and you know what? Quit wasting all your time arguing with folks and raising sand and all of that. And use some of that energy. Sometimes you just got to walk out the house and say, Lord, I just need to talk to you for a minute. I just need, and you know what? God is a good listener. God is a good listener. And, and sometimes God won't even respond back to you. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't, don't feel that you left out. He may not respond back to you, but he will respond to the situation. And have you ever walked back in there and wonder what happened all of a sudden? There's some peace. There's some quietness. There's some gentleness. Don't tell me what God can't do. Somebody out of shout, can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. So what do we learn from the rest of the Psalms 37? The rest of the Psalms reveal other promises that might help us understand what it means for God to give us the desires of our heart. One promise that was repeated five times in the Psalms is the promise that the righteous who meekly wait for the Lord will be blessed by God with the gift of the land. In Psalms 37 and 9, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Psalms 37 and 11, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Somebody ought to shout, thank you, Jesus. 
in verse 22 for such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off somebody out of shout glory Verse 29 says the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. Psalms 37 and 34 says wait on the Lord. Somebody ought to shout wait. wait. And keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. Tell somebody it's just a matter of time. I may be down right now but this is not the end of my story. I may be going through some stuff right now, but this is not how it's going to end for me. I may not can smile as much as you smile, but guess what? My smiles are waiting on me. Why? It's because the more I delight myself in him, the more that he brings his joy. And what did Jesus say? He said, I just want to fill you to the fullness with what? With my joy. Somebody ought to say, feel me right now, Lord. <clears throat> Look at your neighbor and say, you look like you can use some joy. Just, just hold them by their hands and say, I release joy. I release peace. I release healing. Come on, tell them and say, no, no, the devil don't have no, nothing over you. Say, you, 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 you have the desires. So what was this gift of the land? Remember the land Abraham was looking forward to receiving was a better country. That is a heavenly one, which is the city which has foundation, whose architect and builder is God. And, and you look at Hebrews 11 and 16, he says, but now they desire a better country. Somebody ought to clap your hands if you desire a better country. <laughs> See, this world is not our home. If you think it looks good here, then you, you, haven't, you haven't accepted what Jesus said about heaven. No, no, it, it's greater than that. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. You see what I mean? God has prepared for us a city. John talks about it over in the book of Revelation. So this makes me think that Psalms 37, a uh, promise of the land is not just about the earthly land of Israel, but also has something to do with enjoying God forever. Because once we get there with God, we will be with God forever. We will have, that's why the Bible tells us that we have everlasting life, eternity. Clap your hands if you don't know. If you, because look, look what he said. You ought to be excited because this is what the Bible says. The Bible says that Jesus told them when they looked and they said, oh Lord, we, 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 we cast out demons and, and demons. Is, Jesus said, don't be excited or happy because demons are in subject to you. Why? Because I gave you the power and it's only because of me that they're in subject to you because I sealed you until the day of redemption. It is my anointing, not yours, that's up on your life. So when the demons come, they don't run because you look mean. They run because it's my anointing that's on you that they run that's why satan told god he said look i can touch job but you got a hedge around him somebody say god got me hedged in so the devil trying to make you think that he's messing with you but no what he's trying to do is get you to get yourself out of the delighting yourself in God and get over here in all of this mess and all of this garbage and all of this foolishness where he can attack you but baby look as long as you stay over here and delight yourself in God I don't care what he do he cannot touch you why because you have the whole armor of God and the Bible say when the fiery darts of the devil come they can't penetrate why it's anointed look at somebody and say I'm anointed see and, and, and what I love about God is when you delight yourself in him and in his presence it's because your anointing of the Holy Ghost brought you there Jesus said you didn't choose me no you didn't choose me you was having a bad day but you didn't choose me your wife left you but you didn't choose me your boyfriend forsaken you you didn't know you came broken and that's when I chose you why? Because he said a broken heart and a contrite spirit is what he desired. Somebody say, delight yourself. Let me hear you on. If so, then the promise of the land is another way of describing God's promise. To give us the desires of our hearts by satisfying us in him. See, that's the only thing I used to hear the old people say all the time is that nothing you do 
will last unless you do it in God. In God. See all them problems you having? The things that make you cry? God is just trying to get your attention and tell you, I'm trying to draw you to me to delight yourself in me. See, so, so, you know, I, listen, God is just simply saying, come here, baby. I can do what your husband can't do. I can do what your wife can't do. If the children acting up, just leave them. Leave them to themselves and just spend a little time with me. Let, that, that's all I want. I, I want you to spend a little time with me. Tell somebody, you, you're not losing your mind. No, no, you, you're not on the brinks of a break break through you uh, not not a breakdown but breakthrough tell them you're not on the brinks of a breakdown but you right at the edge of a breakthrough see that that's where it's at see you right at the edge of your breakthrough breakthrough what when you break through that and delight yourself in the lord oh my god I, listen i don't know what god has promised for you i don't know but i know one thing is that he will give you his peace somebody shout glory let me hear it on. If so, then the promise of the land is another way. Then that's what God promised us in Psalms 34 and 4 when he says, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. God promises that if we delight ourselves in him, his glory and beauty of love and majesty will so fill us that we would desire nothing else. You wouldn't desire nothing else but God. Our hearts would be completely full. We would be perfectly content. He will have satisfied every desire of our heart in him. See, God, no, you don't need a car to fulfill your desire. You know, been there, done that. You don't need a house to fulfill your desire. You don't need a man or a woman to fulfill your desire. You don't need money because a lot of people have that and still don't have what they really need is because that only satisfies the flesh but it's not it does not satisfy the spirit amen so this is not ultimately under our control it's a sovereign gracious and blood bought gift from God so when you look at 2 Corinthians 3 and 18 uh, this is not something we can simply choose to experience because our remaining sin we need the spirit's work to see and feel God's glory Paul said but we all with open face beholden as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as the spirit of the Lord is and then over in 2 Corinthians uh, 4 and 6, he says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, had shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. So y'all seeing all of this, so it's, it's, it's not ultimately uh, in our control. It's not under our control. It's about God's control. But there are steps we can take through which God promised to give us to give. First, confess our sins, Ephesians 4 and 30. Sin grieves the Holy Spirit, diminishing his work. So we have to turn to Christ and confess him all of our known sins. Second, we have to trust Christ. And Galatians 3 and 5 says, He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, do it he it by works of the law or by the hearing of faith. It's by the hearing of faith. So look to Christ's mercy by faith alone. We have to turn from everything else to trust him, to change our hearts so we see and feel him as all satisfying treasure. Third, we have to pray for the Spirit's work. In Luke 11 and 13, Jesus promised that the Father will increase the work of the Spirit on everyone who asks. So all we have to do is pray, say, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? We ask for a lot of things, but do we ever ask for the Holy Spirit? And the fourth thing in Ephesians 6 and 17, we have to meditate on God's Word. The Spirit softens our our hearts and reveal Christ through his word for Paul said and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God so when we find these passages displaying God's glory in Christ and we read them slowly thoughtfully and prayerfully then God reveals it to us and fifth and the last thing is humbly and persistently wait on the Lord tell somebody wait on the Lord wait on when David said that, he said, I say, wait 
on the Lord. We have to learn to wait on God. It may not happen. See, God may be letting you go through a breaking period. And see, watch this here. Not breaking you down. Not breaking you up, but God is trying to break you through something. You, you know, if, if you ever, if you, you ever, you know, you see people in a burning car or a house, the first thing they do is that they try to break out break out and that's what God trying to get us some of us are so enclosed in our little box in our own little world God is trying to set a fire in there so that we can break out of that to re so his glory will reveal to us who he really is you cannot put God in the box and figure you could keep him there all by yourself somebody shout God is greater than that so now we have to humbly and persistently wait on the Lord. And John 6 and 35 talks about that. John 7 and uh, 37 through 39. Galatians 3 and 5. And Second Corinthians 3 and 18. So we, we have to trust his promise and persist in seeking. In John 6 and 35 he says, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Somebody shout, he is the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. In John 7, 37 and 39, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Somebody ought to shout, Lord, fill me with your spirit. So you have to be thirsty enough. And that's what you should be doing is delighting yourself in God, asking God to fill you with his spirit. Because once you get filled with the spirit of God, there is knowledge. There is power. There is everything that God desires for you to have. It's in his spirit. You cannot operate out of the ramification of his spirit because his spirit is a part of him. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. And watch this here. Jesus sits at the right hand of God, but he says look I left you my spirit there with you that's why the Bible say that it's not by might nor by power in the book of Zechariah but he say it's by my spirit said the Lord because greater is he that is in us who is the he it is the spirit of Jesus that is in us that anoints us that gives us that thrive to keep going look at somebody and say you would have gave up but it's that power that's on the inside of you so he will be faithful he will pour out his spirit's work so you once again can see and feel the glory of Jesus tell somebody that's all I want to do is feel the glory of Jesus that's all that's all I didn't try everything else and nothing else has worked won't you just try him I done done and said everything I done tried everybody and nothing seems to work. But I can guarantee you, uh, the, the Spirit of God will work. Stand to your feet if you believe that. <laughs> Come and lift those hands to the Lord and just begin to delight yourself in the Lord. <laughs> See, it, it's, not, it's, not the, it's not the house. You, you, may, you, you want a house. And you know what? God don't hold that from you. Because he said, I gave you help to make wealth. It's not the car. God not holding the car from you. God said, you know what? I gave you help to make wealth. You, you can buy a car. You can buy a house. See, money answered everything on earth, but there is something that money cannot deal with. And, and that's, that's your breakthrough in that spiritual realm. Money can't buy your spirit. They tried that in the Bible when he looked and say, let me buy this what y'all have. And the Bible say the demons looked and told him, you know, Simon, look, uh, uh, Peter, them and Paul, all, I know all of them, but I don't know you. And obviously, according to scripture, it was more than just him because the scriptures say, and they running down the street naked. Demons got a hold to him. So what you need is just that closeness with God when nothing else works. It seems like your life is out of control. Seems sometimes, you know, I've been there. Seems like everything you touch, it crumbles. The devil will try to make you feel like you're a bad seed. He'll try to make you feel like you're not even worth anything. But tell somebody, God is just trying to get you out of that box. That's all God is trying to do. Is get you out of that box. That's all God want to do. 
God tried to get you to a place in him where you have all your peace, all of your joy. Because that's what God wants you to have. At the end of the day, that's what he wants you to have. See that new car that gave you joy today, tomorrow when it breaks down or going flat, you're going to be mad. So now, never put things before God. God just want to give you peace. Listen, I want to pray for you.